Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Today I'm going to be reacting to the power of Gayatri Mantra, Sadhguru. So, the previous video, Lakani talked about the meaning of it. I won't go too much into detail. If you want to watch it, it's the previous video from this one. So let's go ahead and give this video a shot. What you call as Gayatri, what you call as many other things, in yoga we call this Tantra Yoga. Improper usage of sounds, powerful sounds, can cause serious problems. Someone brought this lady to the program and uh, she had lost her voice almost six or seven months or almost eight months before she came to me. Mantras need to be done with certain care. Gayatri is uh, a powerful process, very different in its nature. It is not something that's entirely focused towards one's internal or spiritual growth or that dimension. It involves various things. So this was generally taught to every householder so that for the not so focused people, some substance, some support for well-being, health, success and other aspects of life. So Gayatri is not necessarily for a spirit serious spiritual practitioner. It is more for a householder for whom spiritual process is also one aspect of his life. It's a possibility if it's properly initiated. We don't generally do those things here because Except for the Devi, spiritual process here is devoid of all ritual. Internalizing the process is little more sophisticated and subtle, but far more reliable than external processes. When we use external processes, to create inner dimensions. It leads to a certain limitation of space and time as to what we do and what we do not do. You can't be twenty-four hours spiritually on if you are involved in an external process. It's a good support, it's a good aid, but it's just that, it's a good support. In terms of support, there are many other ways to support this. Above all, those who are initiated by us here, we support them in a completely different way. They… they just have to… They just have to ask for it and wherever they are, there is a support system. Support system not in terms of teachers and volunteers and stuff. Energetic support is available wherever they are. So, because of our ability to provide this support to every human being, wherever they may be. I got distracted. Yeah, you can see where my mouse is moving. Is that a cricket? Let me see, 401, sorry to interrupt, but... Oh, wow! So it did move. I wasn't paying... I was looking down there, but I was looking at the closed captioning. I, I, I think it moved. 401's where we're at. Huh. Okay. Well, 
Okay. Let's continue. We did not establish rituals of support. It is… it is one of the most popular things that's been done in the country for a long time. Long time means particularly in the last thousand years, I think since Adi Shankara, he propagated this big time. Because when he came, there was a certain degradation of general population. So, he wanted to teach something that's mass. Like today we are doing Isha Kriya, mass. Gayatri is a certain process which involves many things. And considering the nature of what it is, I'm not saying it's relevant today, it'll always be relevant, but uh, socially and structurally, it is not so fitting into modern life as it is. <coughs> Wonder why? Because of the things that are needed to make this happen. In today's world, because almost a huge population on the planet today does not stay in the same place. I want you to understand, I want to look back and see. Five hundred years ago, most people in their whole lifetime, they got up and went back to sleep in the same place, in the same building for their whole lifetime without one day of being out. That's how life used to be. Today I think uh, very, very few f human beings are like that. People like me, uh, if I sleep on the same bed for two nights, I think it's a fortune <laughs> So, those days are gone. Because of that, certain rituals and certain ways of doing things, the relevance of that has come down substantially. I'm not saying the relevance of the basic practice is gone now, but social things have changed, situational changes have happened which doesn't facilitate those type of practices much. It's best they're internalized. Internalized processes can be done anywhere. We are not depending upon what kind of atmosphere we are in, what kind of people we are with, it doesn't matter. So, yoga is one hundred percent internalized. What you call as Gayatri, what you call as many other things, in yoga we call this tantra yoga. When I say tantra yoga, today tantra has found very ridiculous expressions, particularly in the western nations. So is uh, Gayatri uh, tantra? Are those one and the same or is there still some subtle differences? Curious, <clears throat> I mean Sadhguru says in… Um, they call it tantra yoga, so I'm, I'm just not sure, I'm just trying to understand again whether there is a difference or if there's no difference at all. Um, Tantra made it into Western nation? Oh, expressions, okay. <laughs> and people think tant if you utter the word Tantra, they're thinking about unbridled promiscuity. No, Tantra just means technology. There are various types of Tantras. So if you employ technologies where external material is involved, that's called tantra. If you employ technologies where no external material is involved, it's completely internalized, then we call it yoga. Hmm. If you want to create tantric processes, right now an arati is happening in the Devi temple, it's a kind of a tantra. A puja happens, it's a tantra. An abhishekam happens, it's a tantra. These are techniques or technologies to create certain impact. But now if you want to do tantra, you need the form of the devi, you have so many limitations. 
so would it be fair to say that um, whenever we did the Lingus, that is also a Tantra? The... Oh, oh my gosh, I can't remember which one it was. I know he's done the one big Linga. I think it was his life's work that he's been doing for the past three, three lives, I believe, three or four lives. He's finally completed it. <clears throat> and then he did the, um, it was the serpent one. Again, I remember ideas, not very specific on things. Again, the one big Linga, which was his three, three lives, three or four lives work, trying to get it done for it, I believe his master put him on that path if I remember correctly <clears throat> and then the the serpent one for the for the promise of the future I think it was or something along those lines or the protection of the future I think are these considered tantras as well Tantra is useful when people are not willing to do anything by themselves they want somebody else to do it for them so one person who's learned how to do it facilitates it for everyone. Well, there you go. The danger of tantra is exploitation. Huh. There was a fabulous tantric culture in this country. In the last two generations, we've beaten it down because it led to such states of exploitation and turned so ugly, we thought it's better without it. So the last two generations have really pushed ritualistic way of life out because it was so exploitative. So internalized processes, the safety of it is nobody can exploit it, it's you. Somebody can inspire you, somebody can initiate you, somebody can induct you into your powerful process, that's it. There is no room for exploitation. At the same time, there is no need to throw everything out. That would be like throwing the baby with the bath water. You don't have to throw everything out. Carefully maintain tantra, it's okay. I want you to obliterate this silly idea that you have. Tantra means sexuality. No, it's got nothing to do with sexuality. It has got something to do with using external means to make things happen, whatever. Because both yogis and tantrics are more like scientists making… seeing how to make it work. They might not have fit into the moral codes of a particular society at a particular time in history. Because of that, they might have gotten this label. Because of that, they've gotten this label. But otherwise, it is nothing to do with sexuality, it's about learning to use external material for your well-being. Not just yours, the larger group of people. So Gayatri belongs to that realm, nothing wrong with it, it's just the suitability of today. The mantras are a powerful process but they need to be properly used, properly initiated. Improper usage of sounds, powerful sounds can cause serious problems. I happened to be in United States and uh, someone brought this lady to the program. It was a seven-day event and uh, she had lost her voice almost six or seven months or almost eight months before she came to me. Her voice totally gone. She's seen every doctor, every expert, voice gone. She can't speak a word. Simply empty air comes out when she tries to speak without any sound. They've not been able to detect anything improper with her vocal cords or whatever, everything is proper but she can't speak. So naturally when nothing is there, they will say, maybe uh, there is a polyp, maybe there is this, maybe there is that, maybe, you know, all kinds of cortisones and this and that and somebody is suggesting a surgery, there's nothing else they want to open up and see. So they brought her to me and I looked at her and then I asked, did you do any practice, any spiritual process, did you do any mantras? <clears throat> then I said, okay, you be in the program, let's see. 
So one day, two days, three days, she's becoming anxious because her voice has not come back and I have not said a word about her vocal cords. <laughs> so by fourth day, she's very anxious. <laughs> So real quick about that one, um, I think there are some cases where there are people out there who s have had a traumatic uh, incident that happened in their life <clears throat> and for some weird reason they can't speak even though there's nothing wrong with them in terms of the vocal cords or anything like that. It's just some maybe refuse to speak, two, the, the traumatic event is preventing them from speaking. So I'm wondering if this is the case in this case. Then she came again and uh, I again asked her, did you do any mantras? When I looked at her, I thought she must have done something. When I looked at her, it's very clear to me she's done something. She said, no. Then I asked, did you come under the influence of some mantras? Did you go to some place where they're doing powerful mantras and did you come under the influence? She said, no. Last day she's very anxious. Then again I met her and uh, I said, see, you must have done something or you have come under the influence of some mantras. Tell me, what have you done in the last year, year and a half? Where all did you go? Then she said, uh, uh, you know, she, she writes, she cannot speak. She said she did Gayatri. Oh, I said, where did you learn Gayatri? She said, I went to India and I bought a CD whenever I'm going to work. You know, Atlanta traffic is such, she takes two and a half hours to reach her workplace and when she's stuck oh, yeah. in the traffic, she'll do Gayatri like this. When the traffic clears up when she's driving, she'll leave the Gayatri alone. When she has time, she'll just repeat with the thing. You know, she's an American person, you know how she will repeat the mantra. We don't know already the CD itself may be wrong on top of it. She is American, Sanskrit, Sanskrit words will not come easy to her. Of course. No, no, I am not commenting about America. If you have not spoken the vernacular language, to utter Sanskrit will be very difficult. Just much like any other language, you know, that you try to speak that are not very common in terms of how your vocal cords, your tongue and everything folds and does weird things, yeah. <laughs> Even with my birth uh, language, I'm, I haven't spoken in it so long that I'm, I'm, it's a bit difficult. To, even though I kind of know what to say, it's difficult to say the words anymore. It's because I haven't practiced saying those words that um, I know what to say, but the pronunciation is very bad. So then uh, I knew that she's done messed up with Gayatri. I said, uh, see, three months if you come and stay with us in India, we will make an attempt, no guarantee, we will make an attempt and see. She came here and uh, we put her through a whole lot of process. In three months she recovered about seventy percent of her voice, still thirty percent was not there. That is, thirty percent not there means I first of all put her on, said don't make an attempt to speak. At the most in a day, maximum one hour you can speak, rest of the time no speaking. Slowly, slowly she improved. Even then if she gets emotionally excited, voice will go off. If she gets little emotional excitement, voice will go. In about one year's time, she recovered almost ninety percent. But <coughs> still she found if she got angry, her voice will go. I said, that's good, <laughs> let it stay that way. <laughs> Whenever you're angry, at least you lose your voice. You can't be angry. You don't say bad things at least. <laughs> So I'm wondering it's because she hasn't spoken for so long that her vocal cords gets tired being not, being not used, kind of like any other muscle that you have, if you don't use it, then you start using it, you'll get sore. Work out really hard one, like one day work out really tough, the next day you will be sore. Boy, I have done that, everything in my body was hurting. So over three, three and a half years time, she recovered almost hundred percent, only very rare moments it would give up but generally almost ninety-nine percent she recovered in about three, three and a half years' time of practice. So mantras need to be done with certain care, with proper instruction and guidance. <clears throat> Still
still, I am not sure what Gaia 3 is. Now, is it just a prayer? It seems like it, at least from the example of the American girl that bought the CD. Um, but also then Sadhguru did say it was also Tantra, which I have not... don't remember if I've reacted to too many of those, or if I've even reacted to one. I think there was still one in my request queue, which I haven't gotten to yet. I think I should get to that pretty soon, actually. And perhaps some of this will start making sense. So again, two first two videos about uh, Gaia Three uh, Mantra or Gaia Three, whatever it is. It, probably this is just a mantra, isn't it? It, it was uh, like kind of did say it was uh, the prayer of Hindus. So a mantra. Okay. So it's a particular prayer. Okay. So I get now what it is. And the meaning, according to Lakani, you'll have to watch the other video for that one. So, anyways, I probably actually have a better understanding of it now than I did uh, when I watched Lakani's video. But still, why is it not something that's, I say, relevant today? Is it, it because of the things that are involved? But it makes me wonder now. Like, is it something that's very long? Something that involves, a, well, it does say a lot of external things. Okay. And something done in a Debbie temples. So perhaps there's a a very long and involved process. Perhaps that's the reason why. Okay, okay. It's not very huh, I guess you could say like in kinda like how modern times now everything must be very quick. You know, you can get food very quick, you can get whatever you want to watch very quick, you know, it's on demand now. Whereas a lot of the things in the past tends to take time you have to wait there's a long process it's not instantaneous like it is today and perhaps maybe that's the reason why for the mantra uh Gayatri let me know is, is that probably the case where you know things in the past usually takes a lot of times so a lot of involvement and really gets you I guess you I call it sucked in where you're, you're so what I mean by sucked in is like when you're doing something and all of a sudden you're sucked into what you're involved that you, everything just disappears and you're just so hyper focused on what it is. A guy three may be something like that where you know you may be doing the mantra and then doing the whatever happens to be the external factor you're just so hyper focused that time flies and you don't think about anything else. Maybe that's the case for that one. Anyways, let me know. So that's my reaction to the power of the guy three mantra from Sadhguru. I may have to look at the Tantra one just to see how it's related. But anyways, if you like my content, please consider subscribing. Thumbs up, thumbs down, down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vid.